Hello. Thank you. Um, really good sweets. Thanks. <laughs> Pleasure being here. Hey, my name is Michel Rojkin from Mexico City. Um, it's an honor to be here, and it's funny how everything kind of interconnects. You'll see the presentation. Um, I talk a lot about shared responsibility, and shared responsibility in the meaning that not only I have to understand what I'm responsible for in my profession, but what is the extent of the responsibility that I need to keep on changing and reviewing what is the responsibility and who, how it affects other people. Uh, I come from a small town of 22 million people. Mexico City, if you've ever been there, please go. It's not full of bad hombres, as uh, we're getting the bad reputation. It's a beautiful place. In fact, we're actually thinking of doing the wall so uh, uh, everybody comes to Mexico and then doesn't go back to the States. Um, but when I say building in Mexico, uh, what Mexico? Is it a Mexico of these divisions? Is it a Mexico of traditions? Is it the Mexico of bad planning? Is it the Mexico of super, super bad sprawling and planning? Is it the Mexico of a government that takes a public plaza as we know it and has all their bodyguards standing in the plaza while the president is giving a speech and doesn't let anybody, any pedestrian walk? Is it the Mexico where we do peaceful uh, protests asking the government where are the 43 disappeared students that still haven't been found? We keep on being surprised when our president uh, makes the headlines, uh, but we're still missing the students. We're still missing a lot of things that the government is not saying. We were surprised when uh, uh, our president made the New York, uh, I mean the Time Magazine cover saying saving Mexico. And funny, uh, a couple of months later, there was this also on the internet, slaying Mexico. But we also have a sort of amnesia because we don't remember that most of our presidents have been on Time Magazine, not with very good news. Uh, there's also a good side of it. I don't know if you remember this guy, MacGyver. MacGyver was this guy who, who would fix anything with a, with a uh, knife, or a, one of these uh, Swiss army knives. And uh, I say, well, this guy should have been uh, made in Mexico, because in Mexico, we improvise that way. Uh, this, <laughs> I have to explain this. And I swear to God that th there was no production. I don't have a friend that's a filmmaker that did this. Uh, this guy here, this guy here is the owner of the store here, okay? So uh, the light went out, and of course, there was a lot of accidents in the corner because it's a, it's a crossing, and nobody would stop in the, in the store anymore because there was a lot of traffic and it was complicated. So this guy was kept on calling the people from the government to go and change the light, and nobody appeared. So as we do in Mexico, we take matters into our own hands most of the time. So this guy called his compadre, the owner of the truck, he bought the truck, they put the stairs, he doesn't know anything about electricity, but he's getting his hands in there trying to make it work. And of course, by the time this is going on, a police guy shows up and just gets in the scene just so you know that maybe the government is aware of what's happening. <laughs> so th this is how we're creative in Mexico. We're a place where uh, we're ingenious. I say that it's incredibly creative, but we're creative by necessity. We're creative as a survival mechanism to really uh, survive and make things work. And uh, for instance, when we say, uh, we're talking about Occupy Wall Street, I say, well, Occupy should be a word also made in Mexico. Because in Mexico, we occupy everything. For instance, you have this guy occupying his car to sell. <laughs> you have these guys occupying a rooftop to see a, a concert in Zocalo. Uh, and if you Google Mexico ingenious or uh, <laughs> Mexican creativity, I mean, you'll get all these things in Google. <laughs> a little, some fragile ones over there, it's nice. Don't get any ideas for the local cars, guys. <laughs> and when I say, okay, I, I, I'm talking more about rebuilding instead of building, because it's a matter of uh, coming back to understanding what you're responsible for. And for instance, this is one of my first examples. Uh, we did this chocolate uh, museum for Nestle. And when we did this building, we were not asked to do a chocolate museum. Nestle wanted to brand things for the kids, and they wanted us to do uh, a thing inside the factory so kids would come in the bus and witness the, the production of chocolate. And when we got there, we said, well, isn't it, I mean, wouldn't it be better if you do a chocolate museum? Mexico doesn't have a chocolate museum. It's super awkward that we don't. I don't care if it's the government who's doing it or a cultural institution. Maybe you as a private institution could give something back to the community. So we won the competition and we got to do the museum. 
So we did this chocolate museum for Nestle uh, a couple of years ago. Well, uh, 2005, I think, we did this one. So uh, designing for other things to happen and picking up where governments are failing or where governments, uh, as I showed the picture with the, with the truck and the, and the ladder, uh, we were called upon to do a department store. A department store in the suburb in Mexico, outside the city. Uh, I always say that it's kind of inception because it's a suburb inside a suburb inside a suburb. And the deeper you get, the less pedestrians there are. There are no public spaces. It's more car dependent. But we said, okay, we'll tackle a department store. Perfect, we love architecture. But we needed to add more meaning. We wanted to have more responsibility than just that. So what we did is we figured out that there were no public spaces around. Everything is kind of a, uh, all the green that you see belongs to private uh, uh, communities, gated communities. And so in this shopping center, with the amount of space that we had on top, we said, why don't we create a park on top? They never use the parks. We created a rooftop with a gastronomical uh, area on the top that, uh, interesting enough, now uh, provides uh, 30% of the income comes from the, the, the place on top because it has a gastronomical area, but a park that people can stay. And it changed office hours. Uh, it changed office, uh, the, the store hours until 2 a.m. during the weekdays, uh, weekends, sorry. So what is the, uh, the, the value that design is adding? Is it just something that looks good? Or again, coming back to the experience, it's the experience. Architecture is, I mean, it could be great to look at a building, but you want to really live the building. And what's happening on the rooftop makes more sense to the company now. Uh, we kept on working, as I was saying, can design add value. Uh, this is a uh, grocery store that we designed. And I don't want to focus on the design because I think the design strategy was much, much better. This is a common grocery store, as many of the stores that we have uh, around the world. The most important part was the rooftop again. We wanted to create a rooftop where they invited people to harvest, the, the local people around that area, that they had their har harvesting fields. What if they could harvest on the rooftop of the grocery store? What if we could invite the informal markets to occupy the, the parking lot of the, of the uh, grocery store, maybe one day a week? And maybe the great guys of the informal markets that were selling good produce, we can have them then uh, be inside the market, in, inside this, uh, the, the company's uh, grocery store. So the missing link of the formal and the informal, of the possibilities that could happen are more, much more interesting to us. And sometimes people ask, why are we tackling this if we were, we're architects? No, we're designing buildings. Yes, but we want to design the experience that make the buildings much, much better. Uh, for instance, uh, reprogramming an existing program. This was the second project that we worked uh, for uh, uh, Liverpool. And uh, we said, what happens if we did an, a habitable facade? They had already started doing a, a structure that they covered, and it was a black, an empty or a, a box that you could not see to the outside. We said, let, let us try and do something interesting. What if we perforated the inside out so people would see? And what happens if this uh, uh, facade already started having a more interesting thing? It doesn't move as much as I would love to. <laughs> we need to work on, on some future projects, as we saw earlier. But the idea that you have space, so a facade becomes some place where not only you put retail and you put that there's a, a Mother's Day sale or whatever sale, you put an experience. So we brought in a guy that does a digital radio stations. So what would happen if we had a radio station in one of these hexagons? What would happen if there was a gastronomical a platform for chefs to come in? What if there were so many other different things happening in the, in the facade of a department store that people go and buy, but they want more experience than just buying? So we worked on the different uh, elements that you would see on the facade. Um, uh, it's three meters deep. Oh, our incredible Mexican workers. I always say it doesn't matter how uh, digital design we get. Digital design, local craftsmanship, and the guys working is amazing. So. Um, we had done all the drawings to have a laser cut, and I remember go, walking up to these guys uh, in, in their shop saying, well, where's your laser cutter? So he pointed out to the guy over there saying, that's my laser cutter. So this guy was so precise, he maybe did like 60 of those exactly alike. And when I'm telling you, look at this, for instance, this is a three meter high uh, element, and this is the stuff that we can do. And this again has to do, we heard also in the lectures in the morning, about connecting if I'm the architect who just comes in like super egoistic and throws the drawings and expects everybody to work for him, it's not gonna work. If I sit down and I sit down with the workers, not the owner of the company, I'm talking about the workers, sitting down with them, explaining what they're gonna do, they do their best job they can. And I can, I've seen that in the work that we do in Mexico. So you have these guys working 
Um, even the client that we had sold him the idea, he now was at the mock-up, and he's standing in the like saying, oh, now I understand the space. And I'm like, what did you think before? I mean, you, you gave it a, a green light and we were doing the project, but anyway. Even the construction was interesting. Um, people would stop on the, the, it's a very crowded street. You have Felix Cuevas and Insurgentes. So um, people were like wondering what would happen because for a long, long time, department stores would never open up their windows to the outside. They, they want to keep like clients, if, if they get distracted, they're not going to consume. I'm like, are you crazy? Now people want to look outside. They want to be seen from the outside. So it's now a more extroverted thing that's going on. Um, in terms of, uh, I want to be part of the city. I don't want to be isolated in a shopping mall. No? As we've seen, uh, a lot of shopping malls are dying now. Uh, they want to come back to the street experience. And the street experience is because you see people and you walk around the city. You know? So uh, they ended up, we built the building, of course, uh, as you see here in the pictures. But um, unfortunately, the spaces at the end, uh, because they were a department store, I said, no, we don't know how to handle a, a radio station. We don't know how to handle the gastronomical parts. I introduced them to an agency that works with brands. I said, well, let, let it to these guys. Let them do it. So I said, well, okay, how much are they going to pay me per year? I said, I don't know, because we don't know the economy of how this can work. And um, so they never got together. Uh, uh, the building works. It's, it's still a great space for, for uh, people that they, they know the, the, the department store. But to me, it was kind of a waste of, of effort in terms of understanding how you can use the facade. I hope in the future they still do it. Uh, the great thing for me is a couple of architects that saw this project, they're pushing uh, some department store projects that are now catching up and doing what we didn't do on this one. So imagine that they build it, they paid for it, but it, it's not occupied as we thought it would be occupied. At least we don't have the Mother Day's, uh, Mother, <laughs> Mother's Day sale or anything there, no? Uh, even in this picture that you see here, I had my, the staff of my office uh, sit down in the, in the place where it connects to the restaurant. I said, please sit down. I want to see people there. Because the cost per square meter on, on, the, on this facade compared to the buildings on the outside is insane. So imagine having a restaurant there or a pop-up chef that would come in and out. Um, I'm going to talk about the Cineteca Nacional, the, the National uh, Film Institute that we did for the government. And this was a competition, also something very important of this. Again, coming back to an experience. It was an existing cinema that had a, the whole image was this parking lot. You would have a parking lot, you would have these buildings. And what we wanted to do was transform that image. And what happens if we took the cars out and we put a car park here, and then we left just the park. We proposed an outdoor cinema that was not part of the program. Again, when I'm talking about shared responsibility, our responsibility would have been maybe to shut up and just uh, act correctly and give back the client the four new cinemas that he wanted or, or the vaults that he needed. And we said, no, that's the given. Let's add more value. Let's give them a park. Let's do an exterior space for, uh, for film uh, projections. And now they have the concert space on the outside and so many different things that are going on in the project. Here, um, did you see the structure? This is how it was originally. And this is how it, it was transformed. So now it becomes a place where you see everybody interacting. Uh, besides having the movies, you have all these things happening. Uh, people on the street, uh, I mean, gathering on the garden. You have even some very peaceful protests again. So it became a place where people could either go and complain about something uh, or have uh, jazz concerts also, or have uh, musical uh, or theater. And um, again, a place that uh, we left that space for things to happen, which became something super, super interesting. Uh, even on the um, outside cinema, uh, you have these people that don't care about the movie, of course. <laughs> There's some, some other ones that are, are waiting for the movie to start. Uh, some ones that are totally covered with their uh, petates, as we call them in Mexico. Because if you, if you go there, they give you these uh, to sit on. So if you ask for one petate, of course, you might watch the movie. If you ask for two and you get covered, you're not going to watch anything, no? And um, the day of the opening, even our government, when we suggested the outdoor cinema, they said, eh, nobody's going to come and sit down. People are not going to sit down in the space. I said, leave them space. Le let them occupy. So this was like uh, almost 3,500 people sitting there. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about a positive impact on the community. This is a building, a residential building that uh, we designed for, um, for a client in Mexico. And it's all about the terraces and, and, and coming back to the community and, and connecting to the public, uh, to the ground. Uh, 
we convinced the client to open it up to the street. Instead of most of the buildings that were happening that were like, let's cover the street, let's make it private, let's have three bodyguards at the gate, and let's uh, have nobody coming in. I said, no, 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 you have to open, you have to be generous. If the buildings understand to give something back, not only to the guy paying for the project, but understanding that they have to give back to the community in some way, it'll be a more generous building. We will have better cities. So um, a little bit of the shifting of the outcomes of the terraces, the way people start relating to the, to the plaza, and some other images that, that created uh, a different residential building that they have now in, in, in Monterrey, instead of these, uh, as I was saying, uh, pedestal towers that you have that are not inviting for people. Uh, keep on going with the, with the idea of this digital design, but the local fabrication and what we can learn from people. This is a Japanese restaurant that we designed, but we couldn't have done it without these people welding together so when you see the process, which is to us is super important, a digital design process that has a local output. And the local output, when you see the way it's fabricated and it's built, it's kind of an experiment uh, where we do our research and development with the people on site as well. We don't have these, I, I hope we have these beautiful labs in Mexico as well, but uh, sometimes we can't afford the labs, we have to do it on site, it's, it's, it's cheaper for us. But we get uh, great results and we can have these structures that might look as we have designed them uh, someplace else. Uh, I'm going to show this one about um, and criticize our, our um, uh, architecture a little bit because it, it is an erotic tradition. We want to control almost everything, and I think we have to let go and not control everything. We can't control everything. So this is an experiment we did in, in Winnipeg where we had 50% of the project done. It's an ephemeral pavilion that would sit on a lake. So 50% was done with these uh, uh, wooden ribs. We arrived there, they got the local uh, uh, carpenters, and we started working with them with recovered wood, saying what's the, the rest of the 50%? What can the process be learning with them how to ensemble the piece? So uh, we started ensembling with this uh, incredible wood. Uh, I had imagined at the beginning that uh, all the pieces that you would put on top of it were gonna be super tight. The obsession of the architect wanted everything to be controlled. When, when the recovered pieces let the light in, I started noticing beautiful effects, and I started learning from our own process. So it became a process of learning. This is a little bit of a, the final results, the colors from the inside, which are always uh, surprising to us. Our most important critics, of course, the kids. <laughs> and here you see a couple of grown-ups, which was interesting because the kids would just come in, lower their heads, get inside the pavilion, wow, and they were out again, or they were very playful. And Adults would come in, and they were expecting uh, like an entry door or something, or something that would say, come in, or this is how you get in. But it was funny to understand how, when we're growing up, we become a little bit more boring. We forget to be uh, uh, creative in ways that we uh, expect everybody to tell us what to do. And. Um, the final project is a concert hall that I wish uh, we would have worked here with Toyota. <laughs> We're going to work one soon, I promise. But this is a, a concert hall that we did for a client. And uh, the interesting thing is that we won a competition for the concert hall here, and we thought it was not enough. So we proposed to the client, it, it's for an existing Philharmonica of Boca del Rio that already exists. So we proposed to the client from the government, what if it becomes a, mas a complete master plan and not only a Philharmonica? I mean, you need the house for the Philharmonica, so this is a winning entry for the competition. Uh, concrete uh, shells that kind of mimic the, break, uh, the wave breakers here in Boca del Rio. And uh, we said, let's do a master plan where you kind of uh, regenerate the area. And by regenerating, we changed the zoning. Uh, we put some other uh, things that needed to happen uh, for people to walk in there. And you get uh, all these different things just by understanding the power of something that, that has the, the, the enough um, uh, uh, sense of culture to bring people in. And the project is a very simple project. It sits 850 people. Uh, this is the construction site already. It's going to open in November. And uh, by the regeneration, again, of the existing uh, wave breaker, changing the zoning and everything around, we're going to have a great uh, place to, uh, uh, for the Philharmonica, the main stage, mezzanine, some rehearsal rooms, and uh, of course, we wanted to be all reinforced concrete because of the conditions that you have on, on the outside. This is uh, viewing from the um, uh, of the main stage, and then the, the, the work on the concrete. We wanted something that it would have a little bit of relief that would start creating these amazing effects on the inside, and of course, will will stay in the place and last uh, 
uh, for the conditions that it has. Here's a small video. And uh, one of the great things that, uh, that uh, for me is very important, and the client being from the government, when the project is over, he's going to donate it to the uh, Philharmonica uh, um, team. Uh, so uh, it's very important for us in Mexico. It doesn't maintain as a government peace because we don't know what's going to happen. In Mexico, we've had these bad things that when the uh, period of the government is over, then they just let it die. Here it's going to belong to a cultural institution that will take care of it, and we're happy about it. And um, so just as a quick learning, and just to wrap everything up, uh, if we design for other things to happen, they will. I think this is the great secret now that we need to learn as architects. We cannot do things and plan them 100%, because society is changing so fast that we don't know what's going to happen. So if we plan stuff that we design parts of the building and understand what the next part of the building and see and learn from society, we will become much, much better architects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle.